for party of question one, I want the probability of red or yellow. So I'll need to add the probabilities of these two colors. So I get 0 0.25 plus 0 0.2, which gives me 0 0.45. For part B, I'll need to find the missing probability, the probability for purple, and this is equal to 1 minus the other three probabilities. So let me write this down. And if you do this calculation, you get 0 0.35. To find an estimate for the number of times the spinner will land on purple, you will multiply 300 by the probability of purple and this comes out to be 105. In this question I have some patterns. Note that I always start and end with an R and the shapes alternate between R and S. So I will always have one more R than S. So for part A I have 6 type R, hence I have 5 type S, so 6 times 2.4 gives me 14.4 and 5 times 3.5 will give me 17.5 and if I add those two numbers I'll get 31.9. For part B, I have N type R shelves, hence I have N minus 1 type S shelves. This means that 2.4 times N comes from the R shelves and 3.5 times N minus 1 comes from the S type shelves. So if I add these two, I should get W, so W equals 2.4 N plus 3.5 N minus 1. Now, if I expand this, I'll get W equals 2.4 N plus 3.5 N minus 3.5. If I simplify this, I will get W equals 5.9 N minus 3.5. For question 3, to find the median, you just need to add those 5 numbers and divide by 5. So 15 plus 7 minus 2 plus 23 plus x divided by 5 should give me 12. Now I'm going to add the numbers in the numerator. They give me 43 plus x equals and then I will multiply 5 by 12 which is 60, so x is 60 minus 43, which comes out to be 17. For question 4, I have 15 students studying French and 45% of 180, which is equal to 81, studying German, so F or G is equal to 15 plus 81, which gives me 96. And then for the other two, Italian or Spanish, I have the rest, which is 180 minus 96, which is 84. Now I need to express Italian or Spanish as a percentage of French or German, so this is 84 over 96 times 100. Put this on the calculator, you will get 87.5. For part A of question 5, expanding gives you 3c to the power of 4 plus 12c to the power of 3. In BI, Factorizing will give you x plus 9 as one factor and x minus 1 as the other factor. 
And if you set this equal to zero, the two answers you will get is x equals minus nine or x equals to one. For question six, I'll start with the left hand side, which is two and two thirds plus three and three fourths. The lowest common multiple of the two denominators is 12. So 2 and 8 over 12 plus 3 and 9 over 12 will give me 5 and 17 over 12, which is equal to 6 and 5 over 12, which is equal to the right hand side. For question 7, I will use the following two formulae. The density is equal mass over volume, and the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. Now the diameter is 18, which means that the radius is equal to 9. Also note that since I want my answer to grams per cubic centimeters, I'll need to convert these mass from kilograms into grams, and one kilogram is 1,000 grams. So this is 7,040 grams. So the volume of the cylinder is pi times nine square times 3.5. This will give you 567 over two pi. Now as a decimal, that's about 890.6 and so on. Hence the density is equal to 7,000 40 over the mass, which is 567 over 2 pi. Now you can use this one, but with full accuracy. So put this on the calculator, you'll get 7.9044 and so on. Correct to two significant figures, this is 7.9 grams per cubic centimeters. For question eight, I have a depreciation of 15% each year. I need to find the final value, the new value of the car. Now I'm gonna use the following formula. Final value equals initial value times the multiplying factor. Now because of the 15% depreciation each year, the multiplying factor is equal to 85% to the power of four because I have four years, or you can write this as a decimal 0 0.85 to the power of four. So the final amount is equal to the initial one, which is 18,000 times 0 0.85 to the power of four. This comes out to be 9,396.1125 to the nearest integer, this is 9,396. For question nine, I'll start by taking the three to the other side. So minus four X is less than 11 minus three, which is eight. And then I will divide by minus four. Remember when you divide by a negative number, you flip the inequality sign and eight divided by minus four is minus two. So X bigger or equal than minus two is the final answer. For question 10, you need to find the equation of this line. Note that the Y intercept is the point where the line cuts the Y axis. In this case, it is minus one. So all we need to do is find the gradient, now you can either use a right angle triangle with hypotenuse on the line, like this one, and then use the formula gradient equals rise over run, or take two points on the line and use the following formula. Now from rise over run, you can see there's a rise of three, a run of two, so the gradient is three over two. If you're gonna use the other formula, I can take, for example, point zero minus one and the point two two and if i use the second formula i will have two minus minus one which gives me two plus one over 
2 minus 0, which gives me again 3 over 2. As I said before, the y-intercept is minus 1, so the equation of the line is y equals 3 over 2x minus 1. For question 11, I'll start by coloring the two triangles. So I'll start from the red one and use Pythagoras' theorem to find A and B. So AC squared equals to AB squared plus BC squared. 7.5 squared equals to AB squared plus 6 squared. A and B squared comes out to be 20.25. Take the square root. So A and B is 4.5. Then I will use the fact that the area of the quadrilateral A, B, C, D is equal to the area of triangle A, B, C. That's the red one plus the area of the blue one, which is A, C, D. Now the whole thing is 31.5. The area of the red one is 6 times 4.5 over 2. That's base times height over 2, plus the area of A, C, D. And if you rearrange, you will get that area of A, C, D comes out to be 18. So now I can say area of A, C, and D equals its base, which is A, C, times the height, which is A, D, over 2. So 18 equals to 7.5 times A, and D, over 2, cross multiply, 36 equals 7.5 times A and D. So A and D is 36 over 7.5. Put this in the calculator and you will get 4.8 centimeters. To find the highest common factor of two numbers that are written as products of prime numbers, you take all common prime numbers and put them to their lowest powers. So I've got 3 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 1 times 7 to the power of 1. Now you can leave your answer like this or you can do this calculation and get 315. For part B, I will just multiply P to the power of 3 times Q. So I get 3 to the power of 3 times 5 squared times 7. This is to the power of 3 times 3 squared times 5 times 7 squared. Now I will multiply these powers and 1 for 7 by 3. So I get 3 to the power of 9 times 5 to the power of 6, times 7 to the power of 3. And then I just copy the three numbers from above. 3 squared, 5 to the 1, 7 squared. And then I will add the powers of equal bases. So 3 to the 9 times 3 to the 2 give me 3 to the power of 11. Times, similarly for 5, I will get 5 to the power of 7 times 7 to the power of 5. And this is my final answer. For question 13, the interquartile range is equal to Q3 minus Q1. Now to find Q3, I will need 3 quarters of 15. This comes out to be 11.25. So I'm going to take the 12th observation. And the 12th observation is this 12 here. And for Q1, it's going to be a quarter of 15, 
which is equal to 3.75. Round up, you get the fourth observation, and the fourth observation is this 3. Hence, Q3 minus Q1, it's 12 minus 3, which comes out to be 9, and 9 is the interquartile range. Now, because there are only 15 observations, it's easy to spot that the middle one, it's this 7, and this splits my data set into two subsets. Now, each subset has seven observations, and then it's easy to spot that the fourth one in each subset is the middle one, hence the Q1 and Q3, and proceed as before. For question 14, I need to solve these simultaneous equations. Now you can use substitution or elimination. I'll go with elimination because it's easier in this case. I will multiply the first equation by 3 and the second by 5. So I will make the y's eliminate. So I get 9x minus 15y equals to 75. And from the second equation, I get 20x plus 15y equals 70. So the y's now are equal but opposite in sign. If I add, they will cancel out and I will get 29x equals 145. So x comes out to be 5. And then I'll substitute into one of the equations. Let's substitute the second one. So 4 times the x value I found plus 3y equals 214, so 3y comes out to be minus 6, so y is equal to minus 2, so 5 and minus 2 are the solutions of these simultaneous equations. For question 15, I'll need to find angle RPS, which is this angle here. Now, to find that angle, first I will find angle PRS, this blue one, and this blue angle PRS is equal to 90 degrees, and the reason is that angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. I'm not asked to write down the reasons, so there's no need to spend time writing them. Once I find this blue angle, I'll use the fact that these two are opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, so they add up to 180. So angle PSR is equal to 180 minus 136, which comes out to be 44 degrees. And now I have a right angle triangle. I know two of the angles, so I'll use the fact that the sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 to find the red angle, so RPS equals 180 minus 90 and 44 comes out to be 46, and that's the final answer. For part of question 16, note that the first and the last bracket, when expanded, give me the difference of two squares. So I'll rewrite the first bracket and then the first one and the last one. So keep the first one the same. And then expansion will give me 9x squared minus 1. So now I'll expand term by term and get 9x to the power of 3 minus x plus 18x squared minus 2. And if you put this in the right order, you're going to get 9x to the power of 3 plus 18x squared minus x minus 2. For part B, I'll write this in bigger font so I can see this clearly. Now, I can simplify the numbers. The top one cancels out. The bottom one will give me a 4. I can also cross out the x's. This one crosses out, and on top I get x to the power of 4. So the bracket now becomes x to the power of 4 over 4y squared, and then to the power of minus 2. 
Now, first target is to remove the negative sign, and I'll do this by flipping my fraction. So 4y squared over x to the power of 4, and then the bracket to the positive power of 2. Now, the power applies to all three terms, 4y squared and x to the power of 4. So I'll do this step by step for you. So I get 4 squared, y squared to the power of 2, x to the power of 4 squared. So this will give me 16, y to the power of 4 over x to the power of 8. And this is the final answer. For question 17, I'll first split the trapezium into two like this. And then I'll use the following two formulae to first find the angle P using the area formula. And then once I find angle P, I'll use the cosine rule to find the side QS. Now, because the area of the parallelogram is 18, the area of each triangle is 9. Hence, using the area formula, I get the following. 1 over 2 times 3.8 times 6.1 times sine of P equals to 9. So, sine P equals to a fraction with numerator 9 and denominator 1 over 2 times 3.8 times 6.1. Put this on the calculator and it will give you 0 0.776 and so on. So, P is the inverse sine of this number and this will come out to be 50.9 and so on. Now, I'm being told that SPQ is acute, so no need to do anything else for P. And then using the cosine rule, QS squared is equal to 3.8 squared plus 6.1 squared minus 2 times 3.8 times 6.1 times cos of 50.9 and so on. So QS squared is 22.4 and so on. Take the square root of that and you will get 4.7370 and so on. And correct to three significant figures, this comes out to be 4.74. For question 18, I need to find the distance TV. Now, to do so, I'll form a right angle triangle with TV as the hypotenuse. The third point will be the midpoint of CD, and I will label this as K. For this triangle, I only know KT that is equal to 6, and to find KV, I'll use the triangle KCV. So let's extract those two triangles, use the red one to find KV and then the blue one to find TV. So KV squared is equal to 3 squared plus 3 squared, which is 18. So KV is the square root of 18. And then let's copy this on the blue triangle. So TV squared is equal to square root of 18 squared plus 6 squared, which is equal to 54. Hence, TV is the square root of 54. Now, I will leave this as it is because I'm asked to give the answer in the form square root of A, where A is an integer. For question 19, I will color the regions of interest. Now, I'm given that the blue region represents eight 
trees less than the red region and I need to find how many trees in the purple region. Note that the vertical axis has no scale, so either I will put my own scale there or I'll work out with the area in terms of small squares. I'll proceed with the second method, counting the number of small squares for each of these regions. Now for the blue region, which is between 300 and 400, the block is 10 squares wide and 15 squares high, so 10 times 15 it's 150 squares. For the red region, which is from 400 to 500, I have two blocks. One of them is 5 squares wide and 37.5 squares high. And the second one is 5 squares wide and 12.5 squares high. If you do this calculation, you will get 250 squares. For the purple region, which is more than 500, I have two blocks. One of them is 10 squares wide by 12.5 high, and the second one is 20 squares wide and 2.5 squares high. This multiplication and addition will give me 175 squares. Now note that the difference between the blue and the red regions is 100 squares and these 100 squares correspond to 8 trees. So let's write this down. 100 squares is equal to 8 trees and I want to find the purple region which is 175 squares and this is equal to x trees so x is equal to 175 times 8 over 100 put this on the calculator and you will get 14 trees For question 20, I'm being told that these two shapes are similar and whenever I have this case, I always like working with the following setup. Now, usually I like writing K for the scale factor, but because K is already used in this question, I'm going to use SF for the scale factor. So when you have a two similar shapes, and there's a scale factor, the length is being multiplied by the scale factor, the area is multiplied by the scale factor squared, and the volume by the scale factor to the power of 3. I'm given that the volume of B is 20% less than the volume of A, so I'm going to put 100 for the volume of A, hence the volume of B is 80, and I know there's a decrease in the area by k percent, which means if the area is 100, then the area of B must be 100 minus k. So now I'll use the volume to find my scale factor. So scale factor to the power of 3 is equal to 80 over 100. This is 4 over 5 when simplified, so the scale factor is the cube root of 4 over 5. Now, if I apply this concept for the area, I will get scale factor squared is equal to 100 minus k over 100. Substitute the scale factor you found from the volume, so the cube root of 4 over 5 then squared is equal to 100 minus k over 100. Now plug this in the calculator and then multiply by 100. So 0 0.8617 and so on equals 100 minus k over 100. Let's continue here. Multiply by 100 you get 86. 
0.17 equals to 100 minus k. So k is equal to 100 minus 86.17. And this comes out to be 13.8, correct to three significant figures. I'll start question 21 by expanding the denominator. So square root of 2 minus 1 squared gives me square root of 2 squared minus 2 square root of 2 plus 1. The first term square root of 2 squared is just 2 minus 2 square root of 2 plus 1 which gives me 3 minus 2 square root of 2. Now, the answer should not have any coefficient in front of the square root, so I need to remove that 2. So I'll come to the side and do 2 square root of 2 equals 2 square root of 4 times square root of 2, which is square root of 8. So now I can replace this 2 root 2 by square root of 8, so this gives me 3 minus square root of 8. So now I can rewrite my original expression, but replace the denominator with the one I found. So 3 plus square root of 8 over 3 minus square root of 8. I'll need to multiply top and bottom by 3 plus square root of 8 in order to create the difference of two squares in the denominator. Remember, this procedure is called rationalizing the denominator. So in the denominator, I get a 9 plus 3 root 8 minus 3 root 8, which cancel out, minus square root of 8 squared, which is just 8. And then in the numerator, I get 9 plus 3 square root of 8 plus 3 square root of 8, plus square root of 8 squared, which is 8. If I simplify this, I will get 17 plus 6 square root of 8 over 1. And then I'll have to repeat what I did before with the 6 square root of 8. 6 square root of 8 is equal to square root of 36 times the square root of 8, which is equal to the square root of 288. So my final answer will be 17 plus square root of 288. For question 22, I'm given the sketch of this equation. Now at point t, which is a minimum, dy dx is equal to 0. And I know that the x-coordinate of point t is minus 3. So I'll use that to find the value of p. I'll start by rewriting the equation in a form that allows me to differentiate. So this is x squared minus p x to the power of minus 1. So dy dx is equal to 2x. You bring the power down and then you reduce it by 1. Similarly, minus 1 times minus p will give me plus p x to the minus 2. Now I can rewrite this as 2x plus p over x squared. Now I'm being told there is a turning point at x equals minus 3. So at x equals minus 3, dy dx should be 0. Hence, 0 equals to 2 times minus 3 plus p over minus 3 squared. If you do the calculations, you get 0 equals to minus 6 plus p over 9. I'll continue here. So p over 9 is equal to 6, hence p is equal to 54. In part B, 
I'm given this equation, note that now instead of P, I have 16, so basically P is equal to 16 for this part and not 54 as I found before. And the line with the equation y equals k is a tangent. Now note y equals k is a horizontal line. So for y equals k to be a tangent, then it must pass through t. So to find the value of k, I need to find the y coordinate of t. And to find the y coordinate of t, I'll need to first find the x coordinate of t and substitute in the original equation using the value of p equals 16. So first I'll need the derivative dy dx. No need to perform differentiation again. I'll just go above, take this and use p is equal to 16. So that's 2x plus 16 over x squared. Now I will set this equal to zero because t is a turning point. So let's solve this. 16 over x squared is equal to minus 2x. So 16 is minus 2x to the power of three. Let's divide by minus two. So minus eight is x to the power of three. x is the cube root of minus eight. So x comes out to be minus two. So now I will replace x with minus two in this equation. So y equals minus two to the power of two minus 16 over minus two. Put this on the calculator. Y comes out to be 12 and that is the value of K. For part A of question 23, I need to complete the square. I'll start by taking a common factor of 2 from the x squared and x terms. So 2 x squared minus 6x, then close the square bracket, plus 3. Let's concentrate on what is inside the square bracket. So if I complete the square for this part now, I'll get x minus half of 6, which is 3 squared that minus 3 squared and if I simplify I'll get x minus 3 squared minus 9. So let's copy this back into the expression on the left. So this is equal to 2 times x minus 3 squared minus 9 plus 3. Now if I expand this square bracket I'll get 2 x minus 3 squared minus 18 plus 3 and when simplified, this gives me 2x minus 3 squared minus 15. For part B, you just need to recognize the relationship of this expression to the expression above. Now I'll write this down for you. If I let 2x squared minus 12x plus 3 b equal to f of x, then this given expression 2x plus 4 squared minus 12x plus 4 plus 3 is basically equal to f of x plus 4. And in terms of transformations, this is a translation for units to the left. And if the expression above has a minimum point at 3 minus 15. I can extract this information from this equation. The x coordinate is given by the value of x that makes the bracket go to 0. Once this goes to 0, what is left is minus 15. So since the minimum point is 3 minus 15 and you translate these four units to the left, the new minimum point will be minus 1 minus 15. In question 24, there are x counters with two faces each, one red, one green. All counters are laid down on a table and five 
faces are red, which means that the remaining x minus 5 are green. Then Elliot picks one at random, turns the counter over, and then he repeats the same experiment with the second counter. Note that the question doesn't specify that I cannot select the same counter for a second time, so every time I'm selecting, my denominator will be x. To help me figure out the probabilities, I will draw a tree diagram. So since originally five of the faces are red, the probability of selecting a red face is five over x, and the probability of selecting a green one is x minus five over x. Now, if a red one was first selected, then it was turned over and hence now there is one less red face and one more green one, which means that the probability of the second one being selected is red is four out of X and the probability the second one is green is X minus four over X. However, if the first one selected was green, then the number of red faces increased by one and the number of faces which were green decreased by one, hence the probability of the second one being red is six over x, and the probability of the green one is x minus six over x. Now we're given that the probability that there are still five counters showing a red face is 19 over 32. In order to have five counters with a red face, it means either the first one was red followed by a green one, or the first one was green followed by a red one. So let's write down the probabilities of the blue and the red combinations and equate them to 19 over 32. Now, whenever you're going along the branches, you multiply for these two and then you add the two combinations. So I will multiply the blue ones and get 5x minus 4 over x times x, which is x squared, plus for the purple one, I've got x minus 5 times 6 over x squared, and this is equal to 19 over 32. Let's expand 5x minus 20 plus 6x minus 30 over x squared is equal to 19 over 32. Let's simplify the left-hand side. 11x minus 50 over x squared is equal to 19 over 32. Now I will cross multiply. So 19x squared is equal to 352x minus 1,600. I will take everything to the left-hand side. So 19x squared minus 352x plus 1600 is equal to zero. Now we'll factorize. You can use the quadratic formula if you want. 19x minus 200 times x minus eight is equal to zero. So I have two possible x values. x equals to 200 over 19 or x must be equal to 8, but x must be an integer. So I'll reject the first one. Hence, x equals to 8 is my final answer. For question 25, I'll need to use the following two formulae. I'll start with the sum of the first 10 terms, so s 10 is equal to 10 over 2, 2a plus 10 minus 1d. And if I simplify this, I'll get 5, 2a plus 9d. I can expand, so s10 is equal to 10a plus 45d. I'll do the same thing for the sum of the first five terms. So S5 is equal to 5 over 2, 2A plus 5 minus 1D. 
let's simplify as 5 is equal to 5 over 2, 2a plus 4d. And if I expand as 5 is equal to 5a plus 10d. Now I'm given that the sum of the first 10 terms is 4 times than the sum of the first 5 terms. So let's create an equation and get a relationship between d and a. So S10 equals 4 times S5. So 10A plus 45D equals 4 times 5A plus 10D. Let's expand the right-hand side. 10A plus 45D equals to 20A plus 40D. So 5D equals to 10a, so d equals 2a. So now I'll use the fact that the eighth term is 45. So the eighth term is equal to a plus 8 minus 1 d. So 45 is equal to a plus 7 d, but d is equal to 2a. So 45 is equal to a plus 7 times 2a. So 45 is equal to a plus 14a. 45 is equal to 15a, which means that a is equal to 3.